Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Truth and the Issue with Christian and Jim. They come in the form of addictions, the things we believe to be true about God, ourselves, and others. They are the deep hurts and chronic heart pain that has shaped our thinking and often defined us. They are our issues. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Truth and the Issue. Today we're going to be talking about throwing off the things that hinder us, and specifically the story of the cloak of Bartimaeus. Now in this story, in Mark 10:50, it says that Bartimaeus, when he saw Jesus, he was so excited knowing that Jesus could heal him, that he threw his cloak aside, jumped to his feet, and ran to the Lord. Alright, so you're excited and you're running to the Lord, and you're throwing off the things that hinder. And that's a pretty uh, big deal and significant when we're talking about addiction. There's a lot of things that we need to throw out that are part of our old lifestyle as we step into the new. So Jim, why don't you talk about the old man and the things that you need to throw off? Well, we need to throw off the old man and put on the new self. And in, in Ephesians 4.22, it says to put off the old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And some of the things that we need to put off, my friends, is people, places, and things. We can't hang out with the old partying people. We can't go to the same places, bars. And, 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 and things, you know, things could be uh, like hanging out at a car dealership or hanging out at the, you know, just places you shouldn't be. You know, like the old things could be paraphernalia, you know, old girlfriends, old things like that. Anything that, that corrupts your mind and gives you deceitful thoughts. We wait, 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 wait. You're telling me I can't hang out with all my old friends that go to the bars and drink all the time and uh, do dope? No, you know what they say, if you hang out at a barbershop long enough, you're gonna get a haircut. So you hang out with pigs, you're gonna get dirty. So you need to stay out of those places because you know our flesh is so weak, but the Spirit is saying, I'm willing to help you. Yeah. You know, we, we need to die to this flesh. So um, specifically in the category of friends, you know, we're casting off all our old friends. Uh, we're not able to talk to them anymore. And even go further than that, old family members that are continuing in the party lifestyle, it's not healthy to hang out with them. You need to hang out with other relatives that are not so prone to drinking or doing drugs and that you don't have that type of relationship with. Um, and a thing that you would want to run to is your friends, your new friends at church that you're fellowshipping with, that you're growing in the Lord with that are really there to help you, that are even there to talk to you about things that are maybe difficult and maybe not tell you everything that you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be actually your friends, mm -hmm. your new friends. Yeah, yeah, hanging out at church and fellowshipping with uh, people that are Christians too. If you hang out with people that are doing good, you're going to end up you know, doing some of those good things too. And so we need to throw off we need to get rid of our old wounds and Hebrews 12 1 says to let us throw off every wound that has pierced us you know I can use like resentment resentment is the number one offender it's just like I'm so mad at you I'm gonna go drink the poison and wait for you to decide it is the number one offender so we can't hold grudges we need to let God go deep down inside and get those wounds out because it's it's it, alcohol and drugs, I'm going to tell you this right now, we're just a symptom of our problems. Because we got baby, daddy, abandonment issues, I didn't get the last bit of milk because my brother got it, something like that. Those little things can hinder our walk. Or I didn't get, I didn't get mine, you know. And today, God wants yeah. to get with you. I'm telling you this. I know I'm speaking the truth. Aren't you speaking the truth? I hope you're speaking the truth. Because the truth is setting you free. I believe so. I believe so. <laughs> All right, so we kind of got into it with the things, the renewing of your heart, and just as important, the renewing of your minds and your thought lives. Um, a lot of us, uh, over the course of our lives, we carry a bunch of dreams, um, and those dreams are associated with our old way of thinking. Um, being the top-notch drug dealer, that, sorry, that mm -hmm. dream's got to go. It's got to go. <laughs> it's got to go. It's got to go. Um, 
and all the other dreams that we think about and the things that uh, really have drawn our lives towards a life of drugs and alcohol, those dreams, those thoughts, those aspirations, yeah. those dreams drive us and they drove us in the wrong direction. Yeah. We need to let go of those dreams. Yeah. Um, we talk about things to let go of is being irresponsible. You got to get up. You got to quit being uh, lazy. You have to start. <laughs> I know that's a little hard and not something I wanted to hear when I was doing drugs, but yeah. yes, as a matter of fact, I was lazy. I had a thinking mentality of being irresponsible. I would actually take the past, uh, path of least resistance yes. almost every time yeah. because it was easy. Yeah. And I turned away from all my responsibilities because those are hard decisions to make. So when we're talking about Bartimaeus here, he threw off his irresponsibility and he ran to his responsibilities yeah in this case yeah yeah so you know we got to stop thinking that we can do this by ourselves you know i always always thought to myself that you know i got myself in this mess i can take myself out of this mess and you know what it comes down to this folks that self cannot save self we need a redeemer and Thank God we got a Redeemer that lives and He wants to meet us right where we're at. And we just have to give up our old self, our old stinking thinking, you know. I, I don't have a thinking problem. I have a drug problem. I have a, a drinking problem. That's, that's usually the, the issues is that we just, we want to, we want to just put a band-aid over it and, and, and nothing gets really healed underneath it. We need to expose it and have God come in and heal our wounds. But we have to take that bandy off because bandages are just temporary but god thank god for his scars we get to know his heart amen my brother yeah <laughs> just uh, touching on the, the thing that you were talking about a second ago about holding on to a fence we yeah. have those opportunities every day we're talking about work relationships and family relationships someone comes at you sideways and uh tr mistreats you and you really hold on to that that can dominate your whole week's worth of thinking right there, holding on to that offense. That's something that we need to cast off because that's going to affect every single one of your relationships mm -hmm. and it's going to lead you into deeper sin. Yeah. Holding offense and bitterness is mm -hmm. going to lead you back into your addiction. Yeah. It's step one and step two and three are following right behind it. Mm -hmm. So you need to, when you're finding that you're thinking about something really, really hard in it, you're playing the tapes over and over and over in your head, that's probably a good sign that you've taken an offense and you need to run to the Lord and yes. ask Him, run. Lord, I need you to help me process this. I need you to help me let go of this offense out of my heart. Mm -hmm. And I need you to walk me into forgiveness mm -hmm. so that I can have uh, restored relationships at work, restored relationships within my family so that um, I'm not holding on to these things. You want to throw off a fence. Yeah. What are some other things? You know, of course, there's sin. Yeah, sin is just, you know, when we sin, we're, we're missing the target. You know, think of it as a, as a bullseye. And everything outside of that bullseye is sin. So we want to, we want to stay focused on God. It's, it's, it's hard to do at times because you have the world. And it says in... Uh, John 4, 4, that the greater is he who is in me than he is in the world. And, and uh, Hebrews uh, 12, 1, and no, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says that we are supposed to be renewed by the renewing of our spirit and uh, be transformed. So, yeah. By the renewings of our mind. And our mind. So All our right. Mind. Another important category that I want to talk to you about is the desperation that Bartimaeus um, had in, on display. He threw off his cloak. Now, when you're a poor beggar, a coat, a nice coat, a nice cloak keeps you warm. That was probably one of his most important possessions, and he discarded it to run to Jesus. That talks of desperation. When you're trying to change your life and come out of addiction, you need to be desperate. And that's why I'm saying, yeah, you got to take desperate measures when it comes to getting rid of all your old friends. You can't hang out with them. Be desperate. The old places that you hang out, it's a big decision to stop hanging out at all the places and all the friends that you've been hanging out with. But you got to be desperate. And all the old things that you used to do, you need to be desperate and try something drastic. 
You need to change your entire life and you need to be desperate. And like Bartimaeus, run to Jesus with all your strength, with all your passion, and with all your mind. Yeah, in Matthew the, uh, um, 5, verse 6 says that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And then 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So we need to think on uh, things that are pure and worthy and, and noble and praiseworthy. You know, what, what do we do around church when we worship? We're surrendering ourselves and we're praising God for the good things that He has done. And in my life, I, I, I do it wholeheartedly because God took me out of a really bad situation. And so today I am dancing and thanking Jesus because nobody could have done what he done in my life. And he'll do it for you. Just like he did your life, Christian. Yeah, so in closing, what I would like each one of you who watch this video to do is take an inventory of some things that you need to let go of. Things that you need to cast off and set aside and set down so that you can create space in your life for Jesus to reign and Jesus to work and that new things can come in to your situation and your life and that God's plan can take root. So make that list mm -hmm. and then, um, yeah, just, you know, staying away from people, places and things. It is necessary to maintain your sobriety and that's what counts is, is your clear thinking, clarity because you can do more with a clear mind than a fogged up, unsober mind. So stay focused on Jesus. And that's what works for me. I don't know what works for you. Well, working for me is being intentional. Um, I'm trying to formulate a plan with the Lord through prayer of how, where to go, when to go there, and yeah. how to go about my business mm -hmm. with intention. I'm intentionally picking the spots that I'm going to be. I'm intentionally picking the people that I want to be there with. Mm -hmm. I'm intentionally, you know, considering the activities that I'm going to be in a part of. So I would encourage you also to be intentional. Do you want to close it out? So stay desperate, cast off the old, and put on the new. And put Jesus first, and I guarantee money back, stamped on the forehead, that your life will change if you put Jesus first. Amen. Amen. And see you next time. You're going to see yourself free again.